Mount Druitt renovation day two. All hands on deck today, getting the walls ready for a coat of paint. Kitchen's going in, plenty of dust in the air. Everyone's got their safety gear on, but we're cooking. Dave and Jono from Fresh Kitchen Designs are arriving nice and early, knowing the assembly will take a fair bit of time. Due to the limited space in the apartment, I started to bring in the kitchen elements that needed to be installed first. To make everything work and fit to the space of the kitchen, we made sure they had an early access to the property to measure everything in advance. There's a lot of fiddly work involved in the kitchen installation, and because of the limited time we have, we've decided to leave it up to the professionals while we're prepping the walls. As there is most work to be done on day two, we're having the majority of our labour here pitching in. Knowing that, everybody started early and kicked off as soon as they arrived. Alex Whitlock and son Jake went around to take the order for coffee and breakfast. We all had a 10 minute break and the opportunity for everyone to meet each other and talk through what needed to be done today. We knew that the kitchen would take a good half day to install, so most of us busied ourselves in other parts of the apartment. Ian and Rob from Budget Renovators started tiling the bathroom. The kitchen tiles going to stop here, three quarters of the way up the bath. There's one here. That one there. Uh, so she'll just sit on there. Spraying the walls has to be finished today, and that's the reason most of us have to spend our time smoothing down the surfaces. It's labour intensive and it takes a lot of elbow grease. The guys are just preparing the walls right now for our first coat of paint. What they're doing, they're just, we plastered it last night, it's nice and dry right now, but we're just feathering the edges, get a nice smooth finish so the paint will go on nicely. Today it really shows what it means to have professional and trusted traders. The electricians we used knew exactly what needed to be done for the kitchen guys to install the kitchen and run the fuse box through into one of the top cabinets without any major dramas. So what's the legal requirements around, around that there? Just so you can't do anything in front of it. Okay, so you can't put a cup there around. No, no, okay. No, no. It's going to be the door closing basically against it. Me and the gloss bench stock, the uh, pencil marks don't show up, so we want to put masker tape down and it keeps the, uh, the cut nice and neat as well. Is there any sort of standard? 75 mil. 75. Allow for the overhang between your door. Yeah. Okay. And then just a bit of a space. Once we finish smoothing down the walls, we can get in with the sugar soap to get it nice and clean. When that's dried, we can start painting the corners and the edges, where the airless spray gun is not going to be able to get in. So covered in like Steve's doing right there, just up until that, that lip, and then someone follow with a big brush, and just fill in the rest up until about this point, so that the roller won't hit the, the corners when you're painting. Just make sure it's nice and thick. You don't need to be an expert to paint, you just need to be able to go in a straight line, basically. It shows how well organised we were, as everyone had their own task to finish, and despite the fact that there were a lot of us in a two bedroom apartment, it didn't feel like we were in the way of each other. Around midday, the kitchen guys finished installing the kitchen, and we started painting the edges in the kitchen, while the rest of the team started to spray paint the walls in the bedrooms. The bathroom can always be a tricky one, and watching Rob and Ian work as they finish off the tiles proves how important it can be to have an expert who knows what they're doing. There's lots of careful cutting and careful adjusting that needs to be done to get through all the nooks and crannies and make sure everything's in a straight line. The problem with the crosses is if you leave them in, it just needs a touch to show, and it'll show through the grout line. So always take them out. Prior to grouting, pop them out, and you're good to go. When you've got a, a little border, like a little inset like this, if you're going up the wall, always check that it's still going to fit all the way up. While the professional tilers are finishing off the bathroom, Phil started to tile the kitchen. Rob from the budget renovator stopped by to check on Phil and make sure he's doing the job right. It won't save us time or money if we have to redo something again. That's good, Phil. <laughs> I'm bad for your first time. It's not my first time. Not your first time. <laughs> A 
day two, walls are finished, it's got two coats of paint on them. Uh, the guys nearly finished in the bathroom, just finishing tiling up here. Tomorrow afternoon we've got the, uh, the carpet guys coming in, uh, the blinds coming in tomorrow morning, so everything's got to be completely finished by then. So some patchwork still around the cornices, a little, couple of little touch-ups, but other than that we're looking pretty good. With loads still to do, it's another early start for the team. Join us in the next video and see how they go.